Imagine someone with malicious intent finding a blueprint of a property you own. Now they know all the possible paths to break into the property and discover the secret places. Similarly, if the attacker finds the API documentation, they can gain a comprehensive understanding of how the API works and how it can be exploited. And that's what we're going to look in this video, like how an attacker can exploit API just by looking at the API documentation. For demonstration purpose, I'll be using this lab from both Swigger, that is, exploiting an API in Boinj using documentation. So the goal of this lab is to delete the user Carlos. So we need to perform an unauthorized action. Let's see how we can do that. So first we need to access the lab. I'm going to open this in a new tab. And also, let's turn on the burp suite. So we can capture all those endpoints and analyze it. Here we have the lab. Okay, let's start it up. Okay, burp is on. I'm going to turn on the proxy now. And we have to log in here. We were provided credentials. That is Weiner and Peter. So I'm going to type it here real quick. Don't save. And we are logged in. This is the email address we are provided with. Let's analyze the endpoints in HTTP history. So here we have the login endpoint where we provided the username and password. And then we have my account. We don't seem to see any API endpoints though. Let's go to the target. And it doesn't have any either. So let's explore a little more. We can see there is another functionality here that is update email. So let's try to capture the request and see what it looks like. Let's just say peter normal user dot net. Okay, date. And the email has been updated. Now let's check the proxy history again. And here we have this endpoint. And now we can see the API endpoint, API user whiner. So the HTTP method is patch. And we can see that it is sending the email that we provided, the new email in, in the JSON body. And in the response, we can see that the email has been updated. The thing that we can notice is that it's probably identifying user through their username, I guess. So this is the username that changes for every user when they try to update their email. Also, we can notice the path. So there are multiple ways we can fuss for it. For, ex okay, for example, let me open my notepad. And here, we can fuzz like this. So first possibility is API user, then fuzz. If you know the possible username, you can probably do it. Second possibility is API fuzz. Maybe you can find some more endpoints. Okay. So as we know, the goal of this lab is to find the documentation first, right? So first we have to think what are the possible paths for documentation in a website? If you are not sure, you can ask ChatGPT. Here I'm going to type give me a word list of all the possible API documentation path in a website. And here we can see some possible paths like these API slash docs there are already less of them. You can put them in a word list and then try to fuss for it. Or you can also do it manually since there are very less. I'm going to try the first one. Okay. Okay, and it worked. We found the API documentation here. And here we can see that this is a REST API, which was actually obvious. 
So there are three endpoints here with different HTTP methods that is get, delete, and patch. The one we saw was this patch one when we tried to update the email, which took the username here as a string, and in the parameters, it took the email. Okay, so there is another endpoint that is delete, and it also takes the username. We already analyzed this much, right? When we saw our username Weiner, it was obvious that it was identifying the user according to their username. So, as we know, the goal of this lab is to delete the user Carlos. I'm going to send this request to repeater and type Carlos here and make this delete and remove this JSON body. Send this request and it says user deleted. So because of the lack of access control, we were able to perform this action because the backend is not checking if the user is who they claim to be. It's not checking if Carlos is making this request because there is no authentication token or bearer token to identify it. And if you go back, we can see that the lab is solved. Now, if you are a company that provides an API as service to users and therefore must provide API documentation, then it's totally fine, you can do that. The problem arises only when the API isn't secured and doesn't perform authorization checks properly like we saw in the previous scenario. Also, if there are some endpoints that you want to hide from normal users, such as endpoints for administrator, then you can restrict access to the API documentation specifically for admins by providing authentication or by using some meta tags so it doesn't get followed by the web crawlers. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I'll see you in the next one.